Welcome back to part two, string processing. In this part, we'll talk about strings and their immutability, that they cannot be changed once created. We'll look at several simple functions for modifying strings, as well as other more advanced functions. We'll also give a quick discussion of polyfills and shims in JavaScript. Strings in JavaScript are actually immutable. That is, once they've been created, they cannot be changed or modified. The only way to modify a string is by creating a new one from an old string with certain characters changed. Various functions are supported in JavaScript to create new modified strings from already established strings. Some examples, if I have a string stored in a variable s, there are various functions that I can invoke on that string. For example, s.trim will return a new string of s with leading and trailing white space removed. However, the original string s is unchanged because it's immutable. There are also functions to return a new version of s with alphabetic characters changed uppercase, and to lowercase, which returns a new version of the string with all alphabetic characters changed to lowercase. A more advanced replace function can be used to replace certain characters or sequences, substrings, with others. However, this requires full knowledge of regular expressions, which we won't go into here. Let's take a look at some examples. Here I have a string, s, in which we've placed the string hello world followed by some leading and trailing white space. Invoking s.trim, has no effect on the string s. It's still hello world with leading and trailing white space in it. However, it does return a new string that we can capture into another variable. s.trim is now a new string with hello world with leading and trailing white space removed. s is unchanged still. Let's reset our variable to be simply hello with an exclamation point. If we capture the result of the two uppercase method, then that results in hello. The exclamation point is not an alphabetic character, so it's unaffected. To lowercase does the same thing, but now the h is lowercase. s again is unchanged. Another useful function when processing strings is char at. This returns the single character at a particular index in a string s. Like arrays, strings are indexed starting from zero. So the first character is at zero, and the last character is the length of the string, minus one. Let's take a look at some of these examples. Here I've got a string s, which contains the string computer science is fun. s.char at zero will return a capital C, because that's the first character. s.char at one, the second character, is a lowercase o. S.length can be used to determine the length of a string. It's 24 characters long. S.char at S.length minus 1 will give us the last character. In this case, it will give us a, an exclamation point. Invalid calls will return empty strings. Because there is no character at index 100, that returns an empty string. Another useful function is search. Given a string s, suppose that you want to search for a substring a. This could be a single character or a sequence of characters. It'll return the index, the first index, at which it finds it. If s does not contain the substring a, it'll return a negative one. To illustrate, here's our same string from before. If we search for the substring computer, it'll give us zero because there is a substring computer that starts at index zero. It is case sensitive. There is no lowercase c computer in the string, so it returns negative one. Science starts at index nine. So it returns 9. You can also search for single characters. There are two functions that allow you to get a particular substring of a string. The first version, substr, substring, takes two arguments, a starting index and the total length of the string that you want returned. The second argument is actually optional. If you omit it, it will return the rest of the string. The other version is substring. It also takes a start index at which you want to start taking a substring, but instead of taking a length, it takes an ending index. 
it'll return a substring of s starting at the start index and ending with the end index minus one. This is so that the total length of the new string is actually end minus start. Let's take a look at a few examples. Here we have the string from before. If I want a substring of length four starting at the first index, this should return COMP with a capital C. You can start at any index. And change any length. Again, if you omit the length, it will return the entire string all the way to the end. Science is fun. Substring is for using a beginning index and an ending index. The total length will be the second argument minus the first argument. Nine in this case, eight letters in computer and one space character. Here too, you can omit the second argument to return the rest of the string. Sometimes you might have formatted data, for example, in comma separated value file formats. The split function allows you to basically cut up or tokenize a string along some sort of a delimiter. It returns an array of strings w that are, have been split up along that delimiter. The delimiter character is not included in the results. Let's take a look at this example. Here we have a string with comma delimited values. Grace, comma, Hopper, comma, her birthday, and uh, comma, her rank, and, comma, and her branch of the military. If we split along commas, we should exp expect one, two, three, four, five elements in, our in the resulting array. And we do. Grace, Hopper, her birth date, Rear Admiral, and Navy. Note that the commas are not part of the strings. The delimiter has been omitted in this case. We're not limited to simply commas. If we split along a zero, then that will split along the zero in 1906 and the zero in 09, giving us one, two, three strings. If we split along a lowercase o, we get two strings because there's only one o in the string. Let's try that again, but with p. Notice what happens. Grace Hopper, there are two p's. So there's an empty string between the two p's and Consequently, it's returned. We've only looked at a small sampling of what JavaScript offers in the way of array and string processing. Full documentation can be found at some of the links provided. However, you might sometimes have need to add your own functionality. One, for example, one common operation is to search an array. In ECMA script 5.1 and prior, we only have access to an index of function which is extremely limited. It returns the index of the first string or number matching x. That is, it only works on arrays of strings or numbers. We can't use it to search on an array of objects. However, newer versions, ES6 and above, support an array find function, which is much better. You can actually search an array of any type, not just strings or numbers, and it takes a callback that you can perform more complex logic with. Our problem is that we want to use this new functionality in our application and in our code base, but we can't always assume that all of our users will have modern browsers that support the latest version of JavaScript. The solution is to use a polyfill. A polyfill is simply just a piece of code that will check to see if the find function is available or supported by the browser. If it is, then we don't do anything and our code will just continue using the native support for that function. If it does not, then we can add the functionality with our own code. By using polyfills, we can future-proof our code. It makes our code cross-browser compatible because even if the functionality isn't there, we can, we can add it ourselves. A related concept is a shim, which augments or changes standard behavior. The main difference is that a polyfill provides functionality that is expected to be there or will be there in a future version of JavaScript. A shim adds functionality that is not expected to be standard behavior anytime in the future. Let's take a look at an example. 
Here's the documentation for the find function in JavaScript, which is provided by the Mozilla Developer Network website. Even in this documentation, it makes note that it's only standard in ES6 and above. In addition to the standard documentation of how to use it, a polyfill is provided. You can cut and paste this code into your code base to provide a polyfill for the find function. Notice what it does. It checks to see if the array prototype has a find function. And if it does not, then it goes ahead and adds it. Otherwise, it has no effect at all. Polyfills are a great solution to provide cross-browser compatibility and to future-proof your code.